we were shooting a lot of amateur comics here, so I think it's interesting for people. How do you get into how do you get into this business? Well, I started off. Uh, I actually went on stage at a church talent show at church camp when I was 13 years old and did Richard Pryor material. <laughs> yeah, I was demon possessed in their eyes. But I started off then and then I was interested in comedy real early on and um, this is like 1977, I guess, 76. And then uh, the club started popping up all over the country because I remember watching as a kid, watching comics on Carson. And that's when he started having them on like every week and then every night. Why did they start popping up all over the country? Just well, I think it's because my own opinion is comedy is the last bastion of free speech. You get to see on stage at a comedy club someone calling a spade a spade, not any network censorship. You know, and this is when it's good. I'm not saying it's all like that by any stretch of the imagination. You get your share of hacks, of course, in any booming business, you're going to get the, the leeches and bootlickers, you know. But uh, for me, it is something you go to see where you see you can't see anywhere else. Not even when you see a comic on television can you see a re uh, him really do his stuff. You don't ever see Richard Pryor on network TV doing his stand-up act. Now, if you come into a club, you can see a guy with no holds barred doing anything, you know. And, and a lot of people abuse that and they do old dirty jokes or the people come to see dirty jokes. I don't really believe that. But when it's good, you get to see people... Uh, freedom of speech, different ideas, different opinions, and done humorously. Yeah. Uh, the common perception is that most comics are screwed up. Have you found that to be true? No, I don't believe Personally. that. That's a myth. I, I think the world really is... really troubled background. Or well, yeah, but who, who didn't? Humor. Who didn't have a troubled background? You know, anybody who didn't is a fucking liar. Excuse me, I can't say that on TV, but I did. A liar. I'll say it again. No, I, I, I used to think that. I did. I thought, because the Woody Allen, ooh, I'm so depressed. I had, you know, but it occurred to me finally that actually the world is very screwed up and people need comedians to set it right. You know, it's kind of like I heard a good uh, description of humor. It reframes reality in a positive light. So I think comics are really kind of doorways to a, a, a different understanding of a very, very mixed up and very depressing world. So you're telling me you have an sort of evangelical mission here? No, I do it for me. I mean, it, it helps me to do it. If people want to look at it that way, that's fine. I don't care what, what does, other... What does it do for you to do it? Uh, it's a great sense of uh, freedom. I feel very honest on stage when I don't really feel honest in other parts. I guess that's a lot to do with control as well. I do have a talent at it, and that it always is fun to do what you have a talent at. You know, when, it, when, when you have a talent at something and you do it and it works, there's like, you know, they say, well, there's nothing like that feeling. That's what I feel. I feel alive when I do it, and uh, and it's addictive. You know, it's like racing cars. I guess you know what I mean. Or hitting a home run, you just go, I gotta, I'll go through a slump for five years to have that feeling again. You know, but it, you know, fortunately, their clubs are everywhere, and you don't have to wait. You can do it every night. You know. So, are you on every night? Does it work every night? Not every night. The way I have very, very, very high standards for myself, uh, but. Uh, you know, you get to a point where you can be a professional and you still perform and the audience doesn't really know the difference. So, in that regard, I am on every night. In my own personal assessment, I have moments. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are going to be trying out tonight, coming on with open mic and see if they can make it. Uh, does it take a certain kind of person to, 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 to hold up on the stage by yourself, be that vulnerable? Sure. Sure it does. It's not for everybody. If it was for everybody, everybody would do it. It's obviously, you know, you work an hour a night and make great money. Who wouldn't choose that if they could do it, you know? And, I, and a lot of people think it's real easy to do. A lot of people think it's they're the class clown they can do it. They don't know what it takes to go into it, you know? And it's not even just getting into a nightclub. That's just a, this is nothing. This is a, a learning place. That's all this is, you know? If you want to really communicate with people, you obviously want to connect with everybody. So you're going to have to work up to, you know, uh, television or movies or some type of medium. So these people who are trying out to get into clubs, there's so many echelons of this whole business, you know. What's the top? Well, I guess it's every top is a personal top, you know. Carson's got his thing. Letterman's got his thing. Everyone's got a different thing. Whatever makes you happy. It's so individualized, it's unbelievable. What well, would make you happy? I mean, where do you go from here? I don't know. For myself, I still like to perform, so I guess what I'm doing, you know. Where that will lead, I do not know. I don't want to work clubs the rest of my life, but I do like performing. I just would like to have bigger audiences, 
less dates on the road, you know, that would be nice for the next step, I guess. What is the life on the road? I mean, how, how, every night, every week, another club? It can be like anything, good or bad, depending on how you look at it. And I've looked at it both. I spent years hating it. I spent years drunk, partying. Oh, this is a nightmare. And then it occurred to me in a moment of lucid gratitude. I work an hour a night. I make tons of money. People love me. I get to go on stage and tell people what I think, and they listen, and not only listen, but laugh. <laughs> I'm going to hate this? Then I would be definitely a desperately troubled person. It's a great life. Not that I want to travel the rest of my life. I'm young. I can do it now. I don't mind that. They pay me to go to cities I would never go on my own, you know, reconnaissance. And that's neat. But I don't want to do this the rest of my life traveling because I hate to travel. You know, I like being here. I like being where I get. I don't like the airports. There's nothing romantic about traveling. Case closed. I'm a little tired of it. I've got a bags at home. I got bags with the uh, uh, luggage tag things. I mean, that thick. It's like a fungo bat of luggage tags. Any, any advice that you'd give to someone who's watching this show and thinking they'd like to be a stand-up comic? Any warnings? Any? Um, there's really nothing unless, you know, it's a choice you got to make. And if you make it, the only advice I would tell you is you got to keep working at it. you got to be yourself. Don't, don't do, you know, don't take cheap shots. you got to be yourself. If you got it, you got it. And that's a choice you got to make on your own, you and your personal God, you know. There's no way to do it. you just got to be yourself and you got to believe like anything. You just got to believe it. Okay, thanks a lot. You want to do it. You're going on tonight, aren't you? Yeah, I'll be on right after you. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm going to do three hours tonight. We don't have that much tape. <laughs> Is that it?